It is video review day. That means we're going to be taking a look at your videos and seeing what can we do to improve these, just, just that extra percentage point, that extra bit, every single upload, so that when people watch your videos, they are less likely to click off of them. On Tuesday, we look at titles, we look at thumbnails, and we give a lot of advice on how we can get people in the door. Today, Wednesdays, we're going to look at once they're in the door, how can we keep them in the video? So that's the premise. That's the plan. I'll tell you how it works in just a little bit. First, let's bring in Rob. How's it going? Hey, Dan. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us once again. I'm so excited to help you get 10 million views in 90 days on your YouTube shorts <laughs> to monetize your channel. Sarcasm mode turned off. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's that is in. that Let's is the in. plan. We're going to try and get you more views so you can meet those new monetization requirements. Uh, so the way this works is if you are here watching live, you have the opportunity to fill out one of two forms. There is a non-gaming form. There is a gaming form. Please select the right one for your channel. Uh, and if you're not watching this live, thank you so much for being here and uh, do enjoy all the channels we're going to look at, which are going to be a wide variety. And uh, if your channel isn't on the screen, just be sure you're taking notes and you will learn a ton. I promise. So fill out these forms. They've been cleared. They will be cleared every single week. And uh, it's a it's a fresh chance for everybody every single time. We did get that question. Uh, we did want to let everybody know that we do clear the form every week. And uh, what we've done is actually grab the first two channels that managed to submit on each form to get us started. So the that darn Davis is going to be our first channel. It is an animation channel. It looks like they're doing hand-drawn animations. Why don't we take a look at maybe the latest one? Sure. Yeah. Let's do this. I added it to our auto playlist. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I'm not getting any sound. And I don't know if that's a me problem. I don't think to press play on the um, look because I've got it loaded oh, up as a... I'm so oh, sorry. Yeah. Eliminated. I don't want to be eliminated. You probably will. You're an idiot last episode. Come on. But I thought you, time for the elimination. We got a total of seven votes. Good enough, considering it's mini. Hexagon only got one vote. Yes, expected. Final two, ellipsy and circle. Okay, so we got 30 seconds in there. Uh, <laughs> we interrupted the intro because we were confused as to why there was no sound in the first five seconds or so. Uh, but I think very quickly it, it did start all of the sudden. Uh, what are your thoughts? I must confess that I wasn't paying too much attention to the story in the um, animation because of these production confusions that we got at the start. So, Dan, let's go back to the beginning. The very beginning. Just press. Oh, right. Okay. So they're using OBS uh, to do the mysterious infinity screen recording thing that you see here but so press play then pause again so it looks like they're playing it through a vlc player and they haven't pressed play yet so press carry on nothing happens, oh, nothing no. happens. i'm so scared to be eliminated right, i want to be eliminated so why am i still seeing the vlc player at the bottom etc etc this is what they're doing is screen recording playing a video, which yeah. screams to me, why wouldn't you just upload the video itself to YouTube? Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I guess we're seeing a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you know any creator should be trying to eliminate for the viewers' viewing experience. And we're eight seconds in here, and we're we have all of these technical glitches, you might call them. And then the first audio we hear is a lot of peaking and the gain doesn't sound sound like it's set right on the microphone. Um, just play it a little bit more. You probably will. You're an idiot last episode. Come on. What? So I guess, Dan, that would be a case of the, the microphone is too near the person's voice mm -hmm. so that you're getting all of his peaking. So the solution would be to bring the microphone away from your mouth a little bit or turn down the gain. So, yeah, I do apologize that I've got stuck on these first points, but these are all, irrespective of the quality of the content, these are all immediate turn-offs for the viewer. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and they're, they're they're easy to fix. Yes, but those aspects. Yeah, I I was uh, while you were going through that, I was trying to think to myself if I was making this content, why would I have a video within a video, basically, which is kind of mm -hmm. what we're looking at. And given the way they recorded this, uh, it was a premiere. I just wanted to I just glanced down real quick. I was going to say maybe they streamed it, and that's why they used OBS, but no. Uh, it was, in fact, a premiere that they did. Right. Uh, so there was an opportunity there to edit the video and upload it on its own. Uh, I think this might be a creator who's still kind of trying to figure things out, and they haven't quite learned how to video edit sure. properly. Sure. And if they had uh, video editing prowess, what I would expect to see is it's okay with animation channels like this. It's okay if the characters aren't constantly in motion. You know, we've seen plenty like it where the motion in the animation is actually just swapping over to different frames where the characters just change position and they just stay in that that pose. Um, what I would expect to see, though, is we have two characters talking to each other and the voiceover artist is the same person for both, making mm. no effort to, like, distinguish, you know, who's talking and that, that they sound different. And you can get away with this, but what you have to do, again, when it, when you're starting to edit your video is move the camera in on the person who's talking. So it can be, it can, you, if you use editing software, you can have this picture just like it is. And all you would do is use a zoom effect in the editor software to punch in on this character who's talking and then swap to the character who's responding. So the audience knows what's going on. And that helps set the stage. That helps with your storytelling. Um, Could you possibly yes. take it to the next level, Dan, and use something like Audacity, which is a free tool to change the pitch of the voice so that yeah. they do have some distinct qualities to them or failing that you know you, we usually don't recommend this but perhaps if you did need a different distinctive voice you could try um ai voices from from the internet and see if any would fit the narrative that might be very hard to do but you know we just as you say dan to try and distinguish different character voices what can we do that isn't going to cost the creator any money yeah, uh, I, I think Audacity, which is free, would be a really good place to start. If you can find AI voices that don't sound too robotic, that could be fun too. I've seen people make characters within within videos where the character doesn't have a lot of speaking lines. It makes noises instead, you know, and, and there's captions. Like, there's a lot of creative things you can do to give these characters a distinct voice without spending money. I think if they what they need to do, their primary objective now since we saw a ton of videos on the channel, we know they've been at this for a while. Their primary objective now is to find an editing software, whether it's a, a paid one or a free one, like DaVinci Resolve, and learn how to use it. Just enough. You don't have to learn it front to back, but just enough to put together a cohesive story that, you know, doesn't have the, the issues we were seeing where the video starts and there's no, there's no trim at the beginning. Like, you could have cut the first, uh, it looks like four to five seconds off yeah. of this. And, yep. and nothing would have been lost. Right now, if people click on your video and they hear nothing happening, they'll kind of wonder what's going on and maybe just click away. And that's what we want to avoid. So I think once you learn how to edit with proper editing software, you are going to go a lot farther, a lot faster. And if you can correct that problem, that kind of automatically corrects a lot of the problems we're talking about because you're going to learn more and you're going to get sharper at these skills. So that's step one. And then the only other thing I would suggest, because that's already a lot, is... As a new viewer, if we were trying to follow the story, we are kind of lost. Because it's a character telling another character, you're an idiot. You, Of course, because of the last episode, you're going to get voted out. We don't know who these characters are. We don't know what the stakes are. We don't know what they're getting voted out of. And the problem is we're brand new viewers. And so if this video were to have tried to reach anybody new, they are also lost and nothing's been done to help bring them into the fold. So this is just another technique that you kind of learn over time, your your storytelling that, that kind of comes into play that includes new people as well as uh, regular viewers. Let's finish off with some points of encouragement here, uh, Dan. Uh, mm -hmm. Just scroll down a little bit because the channel, how many subscribers have they got right now? So 50 subscribers, but engagement is pretty solid. You know, they've got 15 comments, not all from the creator. Uh, you know, eight likes, a hundred. What was it? hundred and fifty views. That seems awesome. And then when you go back to the channel itself, I think there's a good level of consistency here. Not only in the cadence, they're posting, I'd say, maybe one or two videos a week. Animation content we know takes a long time. Uh, the thumbnails are, are very bright and like mm -hmm. engaging. 
there's some definitely some positive signs here. Like I'd be thrilled to be getting 800 views, 300 views on some of these videos with all of the things that they can still improve from a technical point of view. Yeah, and and that's and that's why I'm saying if they can if they can fix up their editing chops a bit, we could see by the time we check in this channel again, thousands of views on these videos. Easy. I, I think if you're going to be a consistent animator and you're going to tell fun stories with characters that are somewhat recognizable, like you can go really far. We've seen it happen. So I think that's the only thing holding you back is is a bit of education. So uh, DaVinci Resolve is a free editing software. There are free tutorials on YouTube all over the place on how to use it. Go before you even download it, go watch some, go watch people just intro to DaVinci Resolve kind of videos and, and just watch it and go, yeah, okay, this makes sense. I think I can do this and then go and download it and start. And if DaVinci Resolve isn't your thing, there are other free edit editors out there. And even the paid ones uh, in some cases aren't too expensive. So those would be our tips. Best of luck to you. I just want to give a shout out to Tish. I can see in the chat doing marvelous moderating work as usual. Uh, we really appreciate it, uh, Tish. Good job. Glad you're all here. Be respectful, sharing your comments, advice, and whatnot. Let's keep it friendly. Let's keep it positive. Yes. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We're on to the first gaming channel that's submitted before we go into random selections. So, uh, you know, cross your fingers that RNG is on your side when we get into random selections. This is uh, Gnome East, I think, maybe. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, the gaming channel, they did tell us that they are just a Let's Play channel. That was the when we asked what the channel focus was. That's what they said. And the first thing I noticed were the very vibrant, competent thumbnails. The very nice thumbnails, especially for their live streams. Um, we found the secret cruise ship and, you know, can we get to the yacht? So like there's a goal with this live stream and then they're doing long form videos on fall guys, which I think we should just watch the latest one. All right. Season two of fall guys is finally out with brand new game modes, brand new maps, space maps, battle passes, oh. new items and a lot, a lot more. And I cannot wait to finally get into season two of fall guys. It's been a little while. So let's get right into it. Now oh. we're doing. <laughs> yes. You you heard that bass. Uh good actual intro, like you were setting the scene. You're telling the viewer. If you want to learn all of the updates to season two of Fall Guys, you're in the right place. But it was a really distracting audio. Uh yeah. I guess you're using a competent microphone, but you've equalized it to the point where it sounds like you're speaking to me from under the ceiling under the floorboards or something <laughs> yeah. um and that was very distracting very bassy uh it it, it overcompensating for the bass i think their microphone's probably just fine uh and it's always good to, i always add a little bit in when i'm editing but yeah i had a little bit of bass and even more treble because i just don't want to mess anything up you know what i mean uh my board already does a pretty good job so that will that will fix a lot uh, there are a lot of people covering Fall Guys updates, and your video already, based on the intro, seems like it's going to do a really good job covering all the different things in Fall Guys. Uh, you go over everything we're going to learn, and the footage you're capturing is good. Uh, the audio is almost there, and I worry that people, when they start listening, might, excuse me, might click off because it's just like, okay, this is really hard to listen to. Audio is, is half a video on YouTube, so you definitely want to make sure that that gets corrected. I want to now try and manipulate my audio. If I do that, does it make me sound really weird now? Okay, really messy. No. no. Okay. Whoops. It's not I, don't know how to, I don't know how to use my. Uh, oh, it's because it's the wrong thing. It's the equalizer. Right. Let's try this. Now, do I sound really weird uh, and bassy? No. And no. Opposite. Uh, all right. Now, do I sound really bassy and horrible and oh, what about, get getting there? Uh, yeah. Uh, what about now? What about if I just do all of this, put everything on the high ends and. <laughs> Does that sound just really weird and crazy now? Yeah, it does not sound good. I don't know. I can't hear myself. So, uh, all right, I'll turn it off. Now do yeah. I sound back to normal? Yeah. Cool. Right. Uh, yeah. So definitely play with your settings uh, in your video editing software. Okay. So let's listen to maybe 15 more seconds. Race. This is a completely brand new map, and I'm not honestly. I haven't played this game, and I mean, Ethan, have you played this game before? Because it's just like nope. brand new. I mean, like this looks. Mode? Yeah, I mean, there's oh, all these new maps. Person. Oh, this is like spinning oh, like uh, hammers. What's okay, going on? Okay, I got on? the boot. 
Good boost, good boost. Um, time. Oh, uh, what dead. is this? Different like floors. So now I have more thoughts. Tell <laughs> <laughs> um, what you really think then. So the beginning made it seem like a very like uh, well-structured update video where someone was going to just step-by-step step take us through all the things in the update after they had kind of experienced it for themselves. So they did the intro the way I would expect an update video to go, and then it jumped into real live uh, reactions to what's happening with a second person who was never introduced that just kind of popped up. Yeah. And there's one issue, it's a little bit uncomfortable, um, but we got to talk about it. I feel like the two hosts didn't have the best chemistry. And I only say that they might be the best of friends. I only say that because uh, while the, the what I assume was the main channel host was trying to talk, the other person kept talking over them and interrupting them. Like, oh, I'm dying. Oh, this is happening. Like just reacting in real time because the game is moving and they don't know what's going on. Uh, great for maybe live streaming and like chaotic kind of content. But I, I feel like the rug has been pulled out for me a little bit as the viewer. Now, like you were telling me there's an update video, but now you actually haven't done the research yet and so i have to just experience the chaos with you to get a sense of what the new maps are what the new gameplay mechanics are like fall guys adds a lot of new gameplay mechanics when they make these maps so it's you know this is the kind of thing where i would expect the footage to look like this but you're talking over it when i played with my friend so and so we experienced all of these things and by the end of the round uh i completely i didn't even qualify because blah 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 blah, blah. like that's the kind of video i was expecting and instead it's it swapped on me uh, more audio th thoughts. Uh, the other person uh, playing the game exaggerated the contrast in audio um, because theirs didn't sound too great either. And I heard some music as well. Mm -hmm. It sounded like it was being just being played on speakers in the background and the microphone was picking it up. Yo, this is so, this is like, this is really like a space map. And oh my God, this is like hexagon, but like, like hexagon oh where's the music God. coming from? That's really throwing me. It they have pretty loud music that sounds like they just put it on the video. Like that's supposed to be in the it background. It sounds like it's been playing from played in a bathroom now, but there's some weird audio going on. It's all weird audio to me. Yeah. Yeah. Audio is still a concern 45 seconds into the video for sure. It definitely didn't got, not get better. And every time we, we look at a new section of the map and they're trying to react to it, they're reacting to the next thing. Cause fall guys moves quick. You and I've played it. It, it moves fast. Like you don't really have a chance to like talk about it. You know, you just have to like run through doors and stuff and just deal with it. So I, I think the structure of this video should have been a lot different. Personally. I think in short, it should have had more structure. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, if you're um, going to reveal maps, I think a preamble of almost introducing what the map is like, some pre-recorded stuff and then your experience of it mm -hmm. because it, i i feel if i'm a viewer i'm getting a little short change um I'm, I'm not i'm not understanding what this level is about enough with your experiences from what i've seen yeah uh it, to me it just looks like a fall guys level and i'm as someone who hasn't played in a long time i'm failing to see what might be really new compared to what wasn't in the game before and that's all this kind of stuff i was expecting i guess um so when we get this far into a video and our, the expectations are not lining up with the video we clicked on, it, it's really easy for us to kind of click away. And that's why we're here because we don't we don't want people to just click away without giving you any feedback. We're just trying to give you a little bit of feedback to hopefully make it so the next video is a little more, uh, you know, not as, not as confusing, really. I guess I've just been kind of confused once I get past the audio issues. So... From there, uh, I guess we can move on. The only other thing I would say about this video is, I mean, the thumbnails are really good uh, across the channel. They, they do some really interesting stuff. Um, I think what could have been cool is, you know, you separate the two things. If you're willing to stream that maybe you you stream with your friend, you get all your reactions, you get all that out of your system, but now you're also doing research. So you're making content, and you're doing research. After the stream, you use the footage from the stream as, you know, overlay footage for the actual you talking about the update part. I would have liked to see you know, that that's how you can kind of create like a content ecosystem and mix the two things together. So you're kind of doing uh, your while you're streaming, you're working on your next video at the same exact time. So there's things you can do like time saving tricks if you're willing to stream games on YouTube. And uh, yeah, I, I do think that uh, that might have helped. 
Should we move on to the next one? Yep. Uh, so answer this question, uh, Crystalit. Uh, no, if you filled out yesterday's form, that is for yesterday's live stream. So fill out the form for today. And as Dan mentioned earlier, we purge these forms every time we do a live stream with the hope and intent that the people who filled out the form are in the live stream while we are live streaming, as opposed to filling out the form, disappearing, then hoping as they rewatch it later on that they may have been audited. Yeah, the, the odds only stack against you the more we don't clear the forms. <laughs> we want to make sure it's possible for yeah. those joining us live. If we'd never cleared the form, we would have 50,000 channels in there uh, now, and that would just yeah. not be a good thing. <laughs> And then we would overwhelm our friend. It's the claw. Our friend is the claw. So there we go. Uh, the way this works is we go to the forums and we see, gee whiz, uh, you know, 350 people here, 338 people here, and we just program the claw to pick from a wide range here. How about, you know what? How about 415? Sounds good. Sounds All right. Good. So the claw is set for a bit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I always forget about that. We'll go ahead and mute that tab. Oh, dear. Claws are meant to be quiet. Like, this is nonsense. <laughs> yeah, only, only that sound effect can be used. Yes. Will to the sound effects claw. Thanks. Uh, okay, so we're going to do a non-gaming channel, number 96. And is Alice and Pearl Jam. Can you use that name? Two kittens. This is going to be a oh, cat. Well, if they're cat's names, then that's fine. All right. So we have a cat channel. Uh, why don't we look? They're all pretty short videos. Why don't we look at... Oh, I want kittens Ooh, I don't wanna... versus hostile cat. I don't know if I want to watch kittens injured. I want a cat fight. The, the kittens that dreaded sundown. How about that? All right. They say cats can sense things before they happen. Once Alice and Pearl Jam awoke from their slumber, they felt something wasn't right. They didn't want to face the inevitable once the sun went away. So they read that uh, the text on, on that intro then. It was a, the town that dreaded sundown. Okay. It looked like it's from a movie or something. Mm -hmm. Before it was too late. They would love to go into that room, but the door is always locked. I wonder what's in there. Pearl Jam found this blanket, but there doesn't seem to be an entry point. It's getting late. He needs to hurry. Okay, let's pause it there. Uh, what are your thoughts first on this time? Uh, I guess it's an interesting concept uh, for for a pet channel. Like it's you know I'm I'm gonna film a bunch of footage of my cats. I'm gonna put put it together like in a story. Uh, I wonder if, as somebody who watches a lot of cat videos, I kind of wonder if this meets the audience where they are, you know, yeah. like the, the cat loving audience. Mm. Um, now, we did click on what was kind of pitched as a more like dr dramatic, dark video. Uh, but I, I guess even in this case, I would kind of wonder if if it, it could be a little more like, I don't know, just in line with what I was expecting with like a cat storytelling channel. I agree. I can see the creator is trying to do something fresh and different in a world of instant gratification where you just want to see your cat or your dog do something very cute uh, very quickly. But still, 55 seconds in, I feel as if I wasn't getting any resolution. I mean, there was a bit of curiosity here at the final, seat, seat, final scene that we've seen here with a blanket and what's underneath a blanket. But I think something like that would need to be introduced a lot quicker. The intro um, kind of set the pace, and I was already struggling at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, there just wasn't, I guess, and there wasn't enough intrigue or curiosity played off in that intro because I think it was something along the lines of 
uh, something's gonna happen to these cats when the uh, the what was it the moon rises I think but it was just one scene mm. of it the cats in broad daylight like, chilling out and that didn't set up enough of a curious level of excitement to find out what happens next yeah and storytelling wise I I found myself confused by the scene switching so first there's the cats and the sun's about to go down and things are gonna get bad the next scene like past the intro anyway. They, they want to go in this door. I wonder what's in there. And then the next scene is this one with the blanket. And so in my mind, I was like, is that what's inside the door? I wasn't like, what, where did the room go? Like, I thought that was going to be a point in the story that we're going to like break down a little bit more. So I, I think that just, just storytelling elements, like there needs to be, this might eventually tell a cohesive story, but there needs to be cues to the audience that are in the video that kind of tell you like, don't worry about the door. We're coming back to the door. Um, first we have to deal with this blanket thing. And right now it's coming off as kind of a compilation of things your cat did in one day. And I'm going to try to piece these together and kind of put narration under each thing. But, you know, it doesn't, it's, is it one cohesive story or is a lot of little stories in one video? It's really hard to tell by a, by a minute in. Trying to quickly find in the background here, uh, an outline of a hero's journey. Uh, I can't find it, which is unfortunate. Um, but Tim Schmeyer, who's uh, recently joined us here at um, VidIQ, looking forward to working with him more in the future. He's he's talked about this hero's journey where you've got to establish um, the dilemma for the so who is a hero, mm -hmm. what what do they need, what's stopping them from getting that, and how are they going to achieve what they want. And, you know, you can apply it to cats. You can apply it to YouTube education. You can apply it to beauty makeup tutorials. I think you're right, Dan. Storytelling needs to improve here. And I did see a couple of comments in the chat saying, this seems a bit random or I got confused. And that kind of shit, yeah, like this one. I was confused at first and I'm kind of sharing those thoughts. There's confusion. I, I'm not, I don't know what, what I'm watching here. There needs to be strong storytelling, stronger storytelling points to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's going to help this channel, I think, a lot. Uh, and and part of this research is also going to go down to like the expectations the audience in this space has. And there's a pretty big audience. People like cat cats in general, but all the cat videos I I watch seem to have one thing in common, other than the fact there's cats in them, and that is adorableness. Like the people who make these videos really buy into cutesy sound effects and bubbly fonts and and the thumbnails are a lot more natural looking, uh, whereas these are really overproduced, in my opinion. Um, you know, they're trying really hard to tell the story. And I don't think you have to work so hard. I, I think really like when you have adorable cats, which you do, they kind of sell themselves. And all you got to do as the creator is put, you know, put them in fun situations by presenting them things that they can interact with. Um, and that can start building on a story. Dan, do you mind if we try kittens versus hostile cat? And the reason is, I'm, it's not because I want to see a cat fight, but there is a level of conflict that's set up in the thumbnail and the title. And I want to see if they're able to reinforce that, at least in the first 10 to 15 seconds. Okay. Wait a minute. What is Alice doing outside? And the answer is no. I would say you could have put oh, any thumbnail or title. Some editing work is it's, needed it's there. It's still taking too long, though, isn't it? You could have put any thumbnail and title on this video, and I still would have been somewhat frustrated as a viewer after 10 seconds because nothing's been revealed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's 20 seconds in, and we don't kind of get that, like, instant gratification for clicking on the video uh i i i do this with a lot of pet channels uh but i would definitely recommend checking out kitty saurus uh this person is doing a little bit of what you're doing they don't narrate like you do but they have a lot of cats and they the whole channel they haven't uploaded in a while but uh they you know they have a number of channels with the same cats uh the whole channel is really about storytelling with the pet with the pets uh, it is, I believe, a Korean channel. I can't exactly remember, but they do a lot of English subtitles. This is this is from Squid Game.
All right, pause, pause. So how how many seconds? So that was ten seconds. Mm-hmm. You know, there's still there was still a bit of randomness there, but you got an idea of what's to come. You know, there was a bit of um, jeopardy there. It was one of the cats um, tripped on on the see through bridge. Something was being set up there. There needs to be more reinforcement in the next twenty seconds to get me really invested. But I guess along with the thumbnail, invisible bridge, you know the the. The creators won a, another thirty seconds to a minute from me to to keep me watching. Mm-hmm. So and then so you can tell it's going to start where the bridge gets kind of set up, and there's always cats in the background, really curious as to what's going on. And uh, that now we get into the storytelling elements of like the cats being introduced, the rules of the tournament, you know, and it's just cats crossing an invisible bridge. But this is what I kind of expect from the cat uh, storytelling space on YouTube. Yeah, is is that level of like you know, imagination and uh, pacing. The pacing, even though it was an eight minute video, it was moving quickly. Uh, so that's my recommendation. If you have a pet channel, uh, you know, and you're trying to do this kind of storytelling content, I think this is a really good start. I think you've, you know, it looks like you've gotten in a lot of videos at this point. So in that sense, a lot of practice. You have some data too, like some videos taking off more than others. <laughs> See, that's a cool, now, look at that. That's a cool thumbnail. Yeah. Kittens having a boxing match. So pl- uh, let's play the first 10 seconds of this one. Welcome, fight fans, to four rounds of fisticuffs. Mm. I'm Biff Big Will. I'm, I'm still like, why, why have we got some stock footage of a female boxing silhouette? Like, just just start with that. Start with start with a boxing measuring the, each other. With a bell, and these two cats looking at each other. Yeah. So it's, it's names like um, Iron Mike Kitten or like a, I don't know what what think of some metaphorical cat boxing names. Cat Tyson, Sugar Ray, uh, Feline. I don't know. Yeah, Meow Tyson. <laughs> there we go, Dan. Well done. Well done. Uh, so yeah, I mean, best of luck. I I think uh, you you have two cats that really enjoy being on camera. Uh, it looks like they're willing to do stuff while you're filming them, which, uh, you know, any cat I've ever had usually just stops whatever it's doing as soon as I pull out a camera. So you're really lucky there. Uh, yeah, hopefully uh, our suggestions can be of some help. All right. We will go back to the claw now, which yeah. I have muted. Floyd Catweather. <laughs> I knew somebody would uh, help us out in the chat. Uh... Meow Hamid Ali. <laughs> Keep them coming. Keep them coming. 34 for the gaming form now. The Iron Paw. These are great. I hope you're writing this down, Alice and Pearl Jam. <laughs> Piglet Tube. Uh, they are doing Minecraft videos, but it looks like, uh, well, some other games in there too, but it looks like they're doing different, like, uh, modded Minecraft things which is pretty interesting i want to actually look at this transit with railway one it was their trailer and also has over two thousand views uh the first video by the way dan got four hundred thousand views uh, sh- uh, is it sh- wow okay it's not sh- it's not sh- i'm not saying we look at that one because that's quite old like that was four years old but i was just wondering how um you know how we got to a thousand subscribers so uh, nearly thousand subscribers so quickly and some big views yeah i think the thumbnail has a lot of intrigue there and then um it's okay so it's not minecraft so one thing you want to do and do we have this data okay going into channel audit mode for just a second one thing you want to do is if this video is bringing you subscribers and views today and the things you're doing are not holding their attention it's going to be a really annoying ride for you because you're going to get the wrong audience attracted to your channel so when we see stuff like this Sometimes we recommend that it goes unlisted so that you don't have the wrong people finding it. But it might be that maybe there's more you can do with that game or a similar game. And maybe that's a way you want to pivot. So be thinking about those things. It looks like overall, like your Minecraft content you've done a month ago or so does have some views. There is a lot of potential here. It might not matter. But if you are ever annoyed that it's like, oh, I feel like the wrong people keep coming into my channel. That would be why. All right, let's look at the more recent stuff here. Yeah. So there's definitely sound. It's just Minecraft sounds. No commentator. Uh-huh. 
and the video is called Minecraft Transit Railway Building a Railway. It's a six minute video. Yeah, my concern is that they're going to build this in real time without any commentary. Uh, and also the bit rate for your recording software is is a bit limited. It's not allowing you to move around at the speed you're moving around. You'll notice as the creator moves around their camera really quickly, things get very pixely. So I would say whatever you're using to record this, adjust the bit rate so it's, you know, better. Oh, well, the railway's done. And it looks like they made a mistake and I'm doing it again. So that's where some editing would probably help. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. So now we have a train. Where did that come from? Is that just like an entire piece that you don't have to build? It just... It seems I'm, that way. There's a complete model of it to just plonk on there. It seems like it's a train in a box. Yeah. Cool mod. But I would really like someone to tell me about it. I, mm -hmm. I think that's where I'm struggling. I, I, I've never seen this mod before. And I would really love to know as you're working, like what it is you're doing, why you're doing it. Uh, that is easiest achieved with a microphone and, you know, commentary. But we've also seen videos like this where people put some music, some gentle music in the background, and they have little text boxes that pop up here and there that kind of explain what's going on. But the deafening silence in this video <laughs> combined with the, the lack of any context at all is, I think, preventing this video from doing really great things. The fact that it got 2,400 views tells me that this mod is of interest to people and not enough people in the modded Minecraft community are covering it. There are hundreds and hundreds of Minecraft mods out there. And I mean, I've seen success in the modern Minecraft space. Um, and, you know, to this day, my old videos still get comments, even though they're way outdated of people saying, thank you so much. Like, I just wanted someone to explain it. And you did. Like, that's that's exactly what I needed. And so sometimes I check on my old channel and I see those comments. I'm like, that's so cool. And it's also very amazing to me that no one's come and eaten my lunch. No, Like, no one's updated these videos that I refuse to update. No one's made a better version of them. You know, so you can you could dominate the space with these kinds of views and the mods you're playing with, but I think more work needs to be done. Engagement wise, Dan, uh, how many comments? Two, Two comments. So if you go back to the channel, uh, I know we are getting into channel audit mode here. I'm wondering if they're sharing those videos on a community outside of YouTube, possibly Reddit or somewhere. Mm -hmm. But it might be getting views. But how valuable are, are those views in terms of satisfaction? Are people just clicking on it, not watching for very long, or if they're posting the comments within the, the Reddit post or the Facebook post itself? I don't know. I'm I'm just speculating here. Um, but the, the view counts seem quite encouraging, mm -hmm. given all of the improvements that the content could um, enjoy. Trains. Trains are their thing. Uh, which is cool. Which is great. You yeah. can definitely have a Minecraft train, train channel. Now, this one's jumped into action a little bit more. I like uh, this. Um, you know, But this is where you could have like some text on screen. Or if you know, you're know you not ready to narrate yourself, all right, maybe use a robot voice occasionally to address the things. But cool. I didn't know you could do this. I'm getting... Um, <laughs> has anyone ever played Transport Tycoon? Yo, I've seen. I haven't actually gotten to really play. I'm getting, play I'm, getting I'm getting those sort of vibes a little bit. Yeah, this is a really cool mod, and I imagine what you could do in a regular Minecraft world, not a not a super flat, and the, what you can build. Even if you didn't want to, like you know what I'm learning is in the No Man's Sky community, No Man's Sky base tour, there are a number of videos that are doing really well that have no commentary. It's ever since the Endurance update and stuff, they, they've given us a lot more base building tools in this game. I don't know if this person will talk. So usually this is what it is, though. It's music that kicks up, and they show off their base, right? And so it's, it's just going to be music the entire time and showing off different aspects of their base. This is a really popular thing to do in No Man's Sky. So you have no commentary creators, which is something we get asked about all the time in gaming. Can you make a no commentary gaming channel? Yes, uh, but it's showing off something amazing. I'm saying that the channel we were just looking at could take videos where they do different kinds of trains and different kinds of mods and build tracks through really cool builds and areas. 
in Minecraft. Like, for example, some really popular creators, I don't know if this is still a thing, but back in the day it was, they actually do this big Let's Play world, and then they let people download it to play it for themselves. What if you downloaded those worlds through some mods and with trains and stuff, and then you made a train track through their world, you know, and then you can tag them in like a social post. Like, there's so many things you can do with this, this content. And hopefully these ideas kind of get you thinking in the right direction. You don't, if you don't want to be on mic, you don't necessarily have to be, but you got to pair it with some music. YouTube has a very, very good audio library now of music you can use with, with no risk attached to it. Soon you're going to have access to uh, songs that, and the ability to license them. So like popular hit songs, uh, this is something that was just announced. And and in the coming months, you're, you, you're going to get access to this. So you might not even need to limit yourself to the audio library with uh, copyright safe music. There's so many opportunities here. And I think people want to see more train mods. And uh, I, I think you should definitely be delivering on them and using, don't just do one mod and walk away from it. Do everything you can with that train mod before walking away from it. And, and with each of these videos, try to add a why. Minecraft create mod freight train fun yeah but why what what is the intention here why should i as a viewer care how is it going to make me change how i feel about modded trains in minecraft and then also just look at a classic example of here of why you shouldn't really mix games you know we've got some good minecraft content and then randomly you have a mario kart um video which is the second video in the list which has 10% of the views as the uh, stuff around it. Yeah. It's really good exaggerated example of staying on, stay on target in terms of the content that you make. This says 67,000 views had added an announcement channel to your discord. Um, and that's another one that's probably bringing in the wrong audience for you. So I would, I would consider wh whatever you're most passionate about out of this, this sampling of content we have stick to it unlist videos that are bringing you the wrong audience and come up with a content strategy. It's been a month since you've uploaded uh, best of luck. We got him way into channel audit mode on that one, which uh, I, I do feel like was probably at least helpful for them. Is uh, no man's sky is good now. Oh yeah. I'm super addicted to that game as well as a number of games right now, but uh, no man's sky is so good. <laughs> they've, they've definitely done a lot with it. Yeah, so it could be a huge commitment. Do I commit? That's the question. What, No Man's Sky? Yeah. If you, if you like flying around space and building bases and stuff, uh, but if that's not your thing, you might not enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know if I'm bothered about the, the world building. I like, I, I like action. I like collecting. Yeah, yeah, a lot of that. Item management, building management. Mm, I'm there's, not sure about that. There's a lot of those things, too. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we have Sheffield made plants. They have 15,000 subscribers. I'm getting a five minute crafts vibe on the thumbnails here. Not mm -hmm. necessarily a bad thing. Let's take a look. Probably over water in your ZZ plant, which is slowly killing the plant. And I'm going to explain why in this video, as well as some other bonus tips to help you have an awesome ZZ plant in your home. Pause, pause right there. Brilliant intro. You've just given the viewer a pain point, a problem, and the viewer's probably saying, yes, this video is for me. The guy's going to tell you how to solve it, and he's going to try and extend the audience retention by giving you some bonus tips at the end. Love that intro. Perfect. Well done, sir. Ding, ding, ding. Congratulations. All the celebrations. Good stuff. I would say that overwatering ZZ plants is probably the number one cause of death for the plant and perhaps why your plant is not looking its best. Overwatering is such an easy trap to get into because of the makeup of the plant. It happens when we treat this easy plant the same as our other non-succulent plants. You may be watering your house plants every week during the summer. And while this is generally a good nice for house plants, watering is easy. I think I need to see a bit more of that, if I'm honest. I, I was going to say, it, it does feel like sometimes we linger on them a bit longer than I would. I, I would like to see it break up a bit more. Mm -hmm. But that's just a nitpick. Will result in overwatering issues. This is because ZZ plants have long, thick stems with leaves on that spring from the thick water storing rhizomes that are hidden in the soil. If you take your plant out of its pot, you'll be able to see these large bulbs in the soil from which the stalks grow from. These are called rhizomes, 
are fairly common in plants. One of my favorite plants, the it's all plant. information, isn't it? Like it's it's almost like a, a Wikipedia article. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It, yeah. it's, it's really dense and full of information, uh, which is fantastic. So I'm kind of wondering, like, so if you're this creator, you're very, you're successful. You have a lot of subscribers. Things are going well for you. You seem to know your audience really well. I always start to scratch my head a little bit like what I what what compelled them? We don't ask on the forum. What compelled them to submit their channel today? And I'm part of me wonders is are they seeing their retention dip down because of all the information? Like, yeah, yeah. I was it, thinking that as well. Is there so much information in this video that people eventually get what they need? Because you did say, uh, don't water this. And they came in and they heard you out and we're a minute in. And I kind of feel like you've already given me some reasons not to. And if I trust you, I might not need to keep watching because I'm like, oh, I was overwatering my plant. Now you've told me why I don't need to. There may be more reasons, but I'm already not going to do it. And I might leave. Yeah, we've seen that as a bit as well in the comments. Um, this might be counterintuitive to everything that you want to do. But let's say you only had half the time to make this video. Could you make it in four and a half minutes, trim out all the stuff that probably the viewer doesn't need, but then at the end, you have a call, a super strong call to action to what the person should watch next. Something related to watering techniques or like a plant the viewer is likely, ha likely to have as well as the ZZ plant. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're saying this if your audience retention is struggling. My guess is that your audience retention is probably around about two and a half to three and a half minutes. So, you know, that's 30 to 35%. I have been experimenting. I've been forcing myself in recent videos to try and turn what used to be potentially 10 minute videos into four or five minute videos. I've just done that with the monetization updates. Those videos that I could easily stretch out to 10 minutes. Yeah. But instead, I've made them four minutes, five minutes, and they're each getting above 50% audience retention, which for our channel is fantastic. And, you know, we are nitpicking here. Yeah. I think we, as you said, Dan, we're trying to find, we're trying to go underneath the surface to try and find out what the problem might be for the creator. Because on, you know, on the surface, that intro was fantastic. But as we get a minute in, we're starting to say, maybe, maybe it's TMI. Maybe there is a bit too much information that the creator is trying to share with their audience. Um, also, I think somebody else maybe mentioned their presenting style. Uh, I would, I would, have, I would agree in that it feels a little. No offense to you, because we were all at this point some, at some stage in our YouTube journeys, a little bit wooden. Uh, I was trying to look at the eyes to see if they're reading off an auto cue, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they are. I could just see like maybe their eyes are sh somewhat shifting uh, from left to right to maybe read something. I'm not entirely sure. Um, uh, what do you reckon about the framing, Dan? Do you reckon them zoomed out and just basically showing their study is good with a bit of foliage in the background, or do you think they need to spruce up the design as well? Uh, far be it for me to tell people how to arrange their rooms, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I think as they continue, I yeah, I would expect more of like a, a YouTuber set, but for them, there'd be a lot of plants uh, around them, uh, so. Yeah, because it does feel a little bit like there's there's a lot to see going on in the background. And there definitely are plants, but I'm more concerned <laughs> about this. And then down we here... We had issues last week, didn't we? When somebody's door was slightly ajar. We wouldn't yeah. want to come out of it. <laughs> um, a one, one remedy for this is putting some plants on top of it, at least. So it kind of feels like it's part of the, the set. Uh, you know, I would I would make that like a future thing to work on i think most people will forgive this it doesn't look bad it just i think youtubers have kind of raised the bar in terms of what is appropriate quote unquote for like a youtube set or what's like going to be top notch and sure. uh, it it makes people like me really self-conscious for sure so <laughs> um yeah i i don't think that is more of an immediate issue i, I would i would be curious about why this made their channel and if it's retention if if that's really the issue going on is there's just too much information in the video let's watch the outro oh 
actually stop your plant from sending out new leaves with that lovely fenestration it is known for? I explain why in this video here. Yeah, oh, okay. So there was a good call to action to yep. uh, just one call to action, as we often recommend. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, having acceptable click through rate from that. Uh, so that was good. I want to ask everybody something real quick. Um, oh gosh, dang it, YouTube. Ah, okay. Ah. Well, I might as well fix this real quick. <laughs> um, I want to ask you guys real quick. I'm going to use a poll, right? Uh, but I'll explain the question. I want to know from you, just for video review streams. Uh, we'll 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 keep it to video review streams for now. Do you want us to include a section on the form that lets you tell us? in brief why you submitted your channel i'm having a ton of problems with youtube in the background right now it is fighting me every step of the way see broken monkey monkey yeah monkeys and everything it keeps revert like switching my account to my personal one and it won't let me switch back to the fin iq account so i can't do anything it's just in an endless loop of torment um okay i think i got it all right Stand by. Sorry for the technical delay. We've noticed pretty much every live stream at some point we will get signed out of Google and it ruins yeah. everything. So I'm going to just put up a poll. The reason I'm asking you as the viewer is if we include this section on the form, there is a chance that we don't get to maybe one additional channel per stream because we're going to spend more time reading these responses as to like why people submitted their channel. But I also think it's going to be really valuable information for us in these situations where a very successful, from our perspective, channel submits. And we're like, we want to help, but what, you know, what's the question? Um, so I'm just going to throw this poll question in chat right now. Should we include a, um, what would you call this? A comment box on the channel submission form. Judging by the comments, Dan, you should get a 99% yes um, response to this. Okay. All right, cool. So let us know. We'll check back on that later. And uh, we'll select a gaming channel eventually. <laughs> Sorry, it just has to reload everything. And the claw is warmed up, ready to go. We're already... I'm just going to have to update the claw too uh, to like... I'm just going to do 500. I'm just going to overshoot today. 143. All right. Obsessively clean gaming. So we ask you what your channel focus is in the form. I'm talking about another box that says, why are you submitting your channel today? Something like that. Uh, what seems to be the problem? I want more views. Right. I, want, right. I want more subscribers. I want Most, to my audience retention. Most will say that, but if, for that. if we if we put it there, there will be some people like that person who's very well educated, it seems, in, in terms of YouTube, and they will tell us my retention has been crap lately, and I don't know what's going on. Not not that that was the problem. That's just a me guessing um, or making stuff up. Obsessively clean gaming. All right, the hunter call of the wild, the angler call of the wild, and way of the hunter. So they're playing like these. Hunting and, you know, nature kind of games. Mm -hmm. uh, seems like in terms of length of the videos, it shifts in terms of what they're doing. Like some are two minutes long, some are six minutes long. Uh, let's just look at the latest one. All right. 53 minutes ago. Better be watching this live stream. <laughs> Better sell some Blackberry here. See if we can work our way over there. <laughs> <laughs> but animals can't hear you in the game. You do realize that. Yeah. Jackrabbit collar. I don't know. If it's a male or a female. That's funny. But it's the first one I've seen in a while. So. Okay, I I do like this. It's, it's it's funny. I like that. I do. It's a bit. Does it feel? It's just a bit slow. We're thirty seconds in. Yeah, um, I get you're trying to build dramatic tension. You have the music. It's probably fine. I let your retention be your guide, but it does feel like I'm like, okay, but but do it though. And then it you look again and you're just, just creeping closer. I feel like we're going to get there in real time. It's not going to cut at any point. We're just mm -hmm. going to have to like be there with you. 
and it's just going to keep building and building and building and building. So I don't know. It does to me it feels a little bit long. I kind of want to watch a little more. I'm gonna go ahead and take them out. Where is that tree? One eighty. Yeah, you see what I mean? It just kind of they stop commentating. They keep looking through the binoculars. Uh, it might be a bit slow, but then again, it's a hunting game. So maybe that's part of it. I mean, the audience retention is going to answer this, isn't it? Do, do viewers have the the stomach to actually watch this real time? Because you have set the pace. You're trying to be slow and methodical, but I still think there might be opportunities to do jump cuts here and there. Yeah. It, now, one of the hashtags they're using is called realistic. So I think that's probably the whole thing with their content is they want to treat this like a real hunt in real life. And uh, they want they want to make it feel for the audience like authentic in that way. Mm. Well, let's look at another one. I guess I tell you what, if you scroll up there, Dan, like. Realistic bear hunt, but the thumbnail doesn't look realistic. You wouldn't take out a two bears at point blank range with a rifle realistically would you <laughs> no you'd be taken out by two bears yeah though. yeah you it, would. that guy should be running for his life <laughs> yeah he yeah, should be they're, they're, they're inches away from him um am i on fire call the wild uh okay so let's see if this one's any different all righty guys welcome back to call of the wild we are in revenant to the coast hunting white hill i'm gonna try to get a great one today. Do you guys think it's possible? If you do, leave your comments down below. I did spot these guys somewhere. Where'd they go? There they are. There's a decent one right there. He's not crazy big, but uh, he's the biggest of the two. Okay, a little more Let's Play E this yep. time. Uh, what'd you think? Hmm. I the stakes feel low, don't they? Yeah, yeah. I guess how do you raise the stakes in mm. this? There is that question because you you don't want to do. You're not trying to be a a volume eleven gamer in the sense that you're trying to kill seven deer in twenty seconds with a ricochet shot. Or, you know, <laughs> you are trying to be realistic. Um, but as you said, the tension feels low. Maybe you need to have a bit of a conclusion or a tease at the beginning of a video to get people into that into that mood. Because um, now I'm thinking y your goal here is to try and hunt some, I think, some white tail. Was it white tail deer? Yeah. And is the rest of the video going to move at this pace for 25 minutes? Eesh. Yeah, a bit a bit slow there. I think uh, the title and the thumbnail are not paying off for me either. Uh, the the video pitch is that you're on fire and the thumbnail is telling me that there's going to be fire and this is where it's a great opportunity to have a tease for later show some fire like and, and you reacting to it you know uh that that could be like a good thing to do just to get people excited for what's to come in this 25 minute video that i think it's gonna be needed just want to jump forward and see if we can find because I misinterpreted that. I thought it meant he was on fire as if, like, you know, every shot was a head shot, you know, taking out deers who are like on another continent. I'm so accurate today. It could be that. But with the thumbnail, and it says fire, and there's actually fire yeah, in the background. Yeah. yeah. I'm assuming there is going to be fire at some point. But I don't know anything about this game. Mm -hmm. Is that even a possibility? That looks a bit smoky. Oh, yeah. Wait, here's some. Oh, no, nope, that's just the orange reticle in the <laughs> in the video. I was wrong. Oh, is that smoke? No. So I guess that's also a concern. I'm not saying this would be clickbait per se, especially if you talk about every kill. Maybe you're like, I'm on fire today. This is great. It's just, it's going to confuse the viewer if if at no point in the video, like they're clicking a video about fire in this game that may not even have fire in it. And, you know, they're getting a little bit misled there. 
So that's also a concern. Uh, definitely editing out some parts. We did see just in the intro alone, there was like a jump, like it, it jumped ahead a little bit. So it's not they're, like they're not editing. I think what I would be doing if I were them is not just listening to us, but literally go into this community, the Hunter Call of the Wild, and see what the top people are up to. What are their thumbnails like? What are their intros like? Uh, so that one's from three years ago, five months ago, 11 months ago. So even within a year, we're still getting over 300,000 views on some of these. Two months ago, hunting massive bears and birds. So let's see how this one, wh like why 121,000 views? Now the channel has millions of subscribers. Maybe, hold on. Ah, let's just see. They're, they're top of their game. Well, hello there, everybody. Dre here, and today we're going hunting once again. Welcome to beautiful Finland. Today we're going to be checking out the new Revontuli Coast Reserve. This is a brand new reserve, and this actually has the most game that you can hunt. I'm more engaging, Noretta, I guess is the first thing that you can say. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely. And yeah, we're, we're 16 seconds in, and we know what we're doing, where we're doing it. We know why we're doing it, because you're just saying there's more game here than, you know, whatever. I cut them off. But that even that alone, it's a shorter video, too, and it already feels like more words have been said than the one we were watching for a little while there. Uh, so all of those things make a huge difference in your content. And I would also be looking into the age of this game. A lot of videos here that are kind of older is something that I'm kind of looking at and, and going, hmm, like, how's the community doing for this game lately? Has it, is there a new version coming out? Has it hit a ceiling? Like, I'd be feeling that out too. Do you want to filter by last month, Dan? And then let's see if there are any um, channels, small channels that have had breakthrough content here. A lot of well-established channels. Yeah, it looks like, like that, doesn't it? If, if this was my sub count, 342K, and I was getting 12,000 views, it is 22 hours ago, so never mind. That's that's not fair. Um, that could still get plenty of views. So, oh, 66,000, the channel keeps coming up. 3,000 subscribers there, so that's not too bad. That's a very much a how-to tutorial listicle. Mm -hmm. that's not guns. so much Let's Play. So, yeah, just on like some very quick research, it's pretty well established creators may be hard to break into this with the type of content that you're making but you know the, tr the traditional let's play style of stuff yeah uh but it could be this could be a really interesting community people are still bothering people pretty big channels are still bothering to upload these videos today which is great to see uh i don't think that like a lot of them getting nine days ago hundred thousand views like this is very encouraging in terms of the game's popularity uh, now it's about standing out in the community. So it, there's going to be, you know, those incremental changes you'd want to make to your content to try and work your way up to this point. All right, cool. Let's uh, look at their non-gaming channels and pick another one. 46. MIV Boxing. I'm reading, uh, funnily enough, uh, Mike Tyson's autobiography at the moment. No, oh. it's got a lot of swearing in it. But it's, <laughs> it's good. That is it necessary? Like, is it needed in there? Um, or? yeah, kind of. Yeah. Oh, okay. he, he does a lot of naughty things as well, all oh. of it, constantly. <laughs> but let's not go into that. So it is a channel about boxing. I want to look real quick before we get into that. It's eighty-six percent. Yes, it's not bad. Uh, all right, MIV Boxing. You got eight subscribers. They have just a number of, of videos. They started three weeks ago. A new era begins. So welcome to welcome to channel. So it looks like they, they've either this isn't their first channel or they've restarted their channel. Like something's going on here that that implies there's been a bit of a reboot. Uh, so that's interesting. Should we look at their latest video? Let's. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to MIV Boxing. The spider versus the problem child. Will the child get bit or the spider get crushed? Coming at you right now. As we all know, Jake Paul is supposed awesome. to be fighting awesome. Anderson Silva. So I like the, the energy of the um, introduction. Mm -hmm. The 
set design is interesting. Uh, I think that could do with a little bit of work. If anything, just framing, you know, we've got this classic case of uh, this person's head com covers half of the frame. And I don't understand why that is. I, you know, I'm saying that and I'm kind of doing that right now. So I'm going to adjust my camera a little bit. Yeah, that's more of a, a better look. Uh, and then he had some sort of curious, almost like riddle of an introduction about the two boxes, which I thought was was cute and interesting. But yeah, then again, look, can you just make it full screen, Dan? What's on? What is that a wardrobe? What's it looks like? There's a, a sliver of light here. Uh, what what is it? I think it's their closet, and they have a blue light uh, just to, to the, the left to, to the right. What is that? This? No, no, no. Right to the right of his face. This. What is that? I I thought it was a light, but it doesn't look to be on. Okay. It looks like some kind of studio equipment, though. Just getting distracted. And, and this behind him looks like a sound blanket. Well, my comment was going to be on the sound blanket because it's while it's probably making your audio sound a lot better, your your hair and your shirt and your chair are all blending into it. <laughs> so we've kind of got like a, a floating head thing going on here a little bit, uh, thanks to just how dark the room is. Uh, and I, I like to have my room dark and have the lights in the background and stuff like speak for themselves. But it, like one of my struggles is this poster right here. It it tends to eat my hair, you know, it, especially for for certain lighting situations. I have to really like watch out for that because it'll, you know, my hair just blends right into it sometimes. Let's continue. All right, my my uh, streamyard is telling me the connection might get a little jumpy here, so hopefully it doesn't get too bad. But on October 29th of this year, Anderson Silva in UFC is a legend in his own right. With MMA, he does amazing, and in boxing, he's done pretty good. In fact, we've all seen those famous clips of Anderson Silva slipping punches and coming in with crazy counters. Except I do see a these famous clips here. Well, I haven't I haven't seen them. I would have liked to have seen even if it was static B-roll. Maybe you showing that on screen. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we, I was going to say maybe they don't do that ever, but it looks like there are his hands down. They did a little bit later on while in range. But yeah, if you're going to talk about a famous boxer or fighter doing something, at least a still image of them doing that thing. Uh, if you don't want to get copyright, that's like the best way to do it, I think. Uh, so yeah, that would have been, that would have been cool. I love his energy his passion, his narrating style, and he clearly has knowledge. So all of us are very positive signs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's a lot going on here. The music is chill. I like that. The video doesn't seem to be too long, like just enough information in here uh, to keep people engaged. Uh, it looks like they have like their signature kind of thing they do to sign on and off. Jake getting in that corner and popping that over. Oh, okay. He's just like demonstrating. Uh, I wanted to see the outro though, just to see. All I've got for today and remember ladies and gentlemen keep fighting okay so no no specific throw to a specific video mm -hmm. uh, which is an opportunity you can What's up? you can definitely tell people uh, you know we're gonna cover this in this video here we're gonna you know you can throw to a future video in that way like uh, when this fight happens we're gonna be breaking it down and when that happens I'll put the video right here so you can watch uh, or you could throw to a past video but it's always good to kind of throw to something specific and have people like go to it for a specific reason. But they don't have a ton of content just yet, so. People are criticizing my studio setup now. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right, all right. Whatever. You know, our live streaming setups don't have to be perfect, okay? <laughs> Making me all self-conscious now. I'm going to turn off that light. And then you can criticize more. Now you see what you did? You see what you did now? Now we got to stop everything. There we go. It's very more, blue in there. More moody now. Yeah, it's because I was recording a video um, previously, and I'm a studio set up for that. Uh, okay, so we're going to move on now? Yeah. All right. Encouraging stuff, though, I like, I think he's well on his way with a number of videos he's put together, you know, covering a trending YouTube celebrity topic as well. So I think he had 100 views. So tweaks here and there, and uh, I think that channel should be well on its way. I agree. Lucky Leaper. They said they play Roblox. And uh, well, there's some video that won't click here, but we could maybe look at the, mm, the latest one. 
Yeah, they're all. I think they're all memes, funny moments. It's also a short that got a lot of views. But let's look at this one. All right. Oh, gee, tripping. <laughs> Come here, boy! Ah! <laughs> this is just a collection of sound effects. Yeah. There's no context for these sound effects. <laughs> They're just kind of in the video. They're just hanging out. Psych! <laughs> it's literally like somebody's got a soundboard and no. it's pressing. Oh! oh! This must be a nightmare to edit unless you've already got all these sound effects ready. Uh, I'm, I'm finding it funny, not necessarily for the, the quality of a content. There's a lot happening here. Um, I, I, I get there's a funny moments like compilation, but it's moving a little too quickly. It's hard to wrap our heads around it. And I think the sound effects are making it really hard to focus on what, you know, whatever you saw in that moment while you're playing the game, we're not getting that same experience. We're having to like, mentally work around all of the different sounds and effects we're seeing and it's you know context with these videos is everything because the people who are watching this were not with you when it actually happened a lot of times these come from live streams and things like that and i think we're missing a lot of context here i i think that needs to be i think we need to like take a step back with the sound effects you know just tone down a little bit uh, use them when appropriate. I think the reason people laugh when they hear sound effects is because they're timed well and they, you know, kind of help progress the story. But this just feels like, okay, not only do I need music throughout this whole thing, every time a sound effect ends, another one better start playing. There's two comments here, which I think sum up, sum it up quite well. Like, yes, definitely. I think over edited. Um, you have to use stuff in moderation to a certain extent so that the viewer can follow a thread. You know, I know you may argue, well, Mr. Beast puts all sorts of sound effects and jump cuts and whatever, but the, watch one of our videos and you can still follow what's going on. Yes. Uh, and then uh, this is a, I, I would agree with this, like it's, it's funny in ways that it's not supposed to be funny. I was kind of laughing at the, just how, insanely mad this was to try and follow but yeah. i would very quickly lose interest in that style yeah i i do appreciate that they've taken the time to to try some editing tricks to try and get things uh you know up to that standard but it's gonna be yeah it's gonna be really tough to i think hold people's attention i know the video is from nine minutes ago uh, their shorts that they put out get quite a few views. Not quite the same with their long form content. There, there is one here with twenty one thousand views. Mm -hmm. Roblox kid is kind of sus, but like the thumb is it a, the thumbnail looks like we probably shouldn't click on it. Yeah, that's why I wasn't going to click on that because no. I think adult themes there. We could look at this one that got fourteen thousand views in terms right. of shorts just to see what they're doing. Yeah. Music, music, so, music, music, music. music. Um, nobody wants to be my friend until. Okay, then they're using different sound effects there. I think this tells a more cohesive story. Yeah. Yeah, like I kind of understood what was going on. Like all these different people are backing away from this person. And then like there's one of them that decides, no, actually, I like this person. And then suddenly they can't leave him alone. Like that tells a complete story. Uh, it's it's not surprising as to why this got so many views. I uh, you know I think in terms of gaming shorts, they're doing a lot right there. Somebody's not. They've got seven thousand subscribers. Is that right? Uh, yeah. So do you want to talk about most popular? Is there uh, one or two that have done really well? Okay. I would say there's a number of videos that have done really well. Uh, yeah, they seem to be thriving as a shorts creator. Um, and then their their long form videos seem to have a certain theme that you know it, it's that that's kind of what's rising to the top here when we see the thumbnails for the long form videos <laughs> specific themes you know uh to be careful with that yeah i mean it's, i guess this content is safe for youtube if it's still on there but you know with our pg audience we don't really want to click into them right uh so let's just say this 
for me anyway, your long form videos need to be a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit less edited, honestly. They, they just need to be easier to follow. Your shorts, just by the one I looked at, seem actually like they're doing pretty good. And I would continue doing shorts, especially after yesterday's news. Uh, you might already be monetized thanks to having 7,000 subscribers, which means you can, you know, as soon as mon shorts monetization happens in a few months from now, you're good to go. You're you're going to be making money off of these, which is great. That's my that's my take. I agree. All right. Sorry, I, you was mentioned monetization. I was thinking, yeah, but you need 90, 10 million shorts views. But they might already be monetized. Yeah, or four thousand hours of watch time. Because if you monetize with long form content, you do get monetization from shorts, as far as I understand it. Yeah. All right, 438 eight on the non-gaming form. It is the pop and duo. They do Funko, Funko Pops. I like the channel name. I like the concept. Let's be popping. A family of collectors. All right. I think channel audit-wise, we would probably want to talk about these thumbnails, but uh, we'll save that for another time. Let's look at their latest video. Just one. Sorry, let me rewind it and lower it. Hey guys, real quick, just wanted to let you know we have another auction this Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern, over on the Whatnot app. We should have a real good time. If you guys want to come and hang out, uh, go bookmark the auction right now. You can click the link in our description down below. Am I being sales pitched to here before the video starts? Yes. Okay. Actually, get ten dollars off your first purchase if you have not downloaded the Whatnot app before as well. We'll have a ton of pops up for auction. We have buy it now is already listed. You guys can go take a look at those right now. I don't feel that. part of this video. I feel excluded because I can't go to this auction. I agree. I I think it's a, it's a very long sales pitch. And if you wanted to make sure that people knew this was happening, especially like your core fan base who would be really interested it should have been mentioned kind of like people do when they do an ad for Squarespace or something. They say, this video brought to you by Squarespace, more on that later. And they get into the video. Mm. So I have an auction coming up with, you know, Funko Pops on sale soon, more on that later. And then we get into the content. But we're 27 seconds in and I, there's so far no end in sight uh, to the sales pitch, but I'm kind of curious to keep going to see when it ends. You know what I would love to see, Dan? You know, the um, new... Um... Oh, yes. Viewer player thing, which... They haven't got enough views to show that, but I would, yeah. I would be fascinated to know if it was a spike when the when this bit segment ends. Right. So, uh, there's no chapter here, is there? To jump jump past it. Yeah, there's no chapters, and it's a 26 minute video. Uh, and yeah, we're kind of just we don't know when this is going to end. Should we try another one where there's like just a regular intro? Since we don't know when. All right. Two, Two year old Funko Pop mystery box unboxing. Yeah. Branded intro. Phew. 10 seconds. 10 second branded intro is a bit long in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, cool looking. I, uh, well, Our advice, if in case this person's new or for anyone who's new and our take on it, branded intros real quick, is that they are very skippable. <laughs> uh, Netflix and HBO, all these streaming services now have a skip intro button and it's for that reason of like cool intro bro after you've seen it once you don't necessarily need to see it again and you just want to get to the show uh my recommendation for these especially because i know people put a lot of work into them and or they go out and buy them or whatever is to use it for the end your, your hardcore fans will see it it still kind of brands your video but it doesn't exclude people who just want to get to the video 10 seconds is a very long time uh to hope that that click you know the person who clicked on it like sticks around the branding is on screen right now your unique setup with all of these funko pops in the background yeah nobody else has that setup so viewers knowing instantly and instinctively who to tune in to see mm -hmm. hey guys welcome back to the channel if you're new here my name is vince and today we have something a little bit special for you guys so real quick story we had lost our hard drive while we were vacationing in Florida with about 50 of our first videos on it from the channel. 
we also lost some unpublished uh, videos as well. So through the magic of YouTube, somebody had bought the hard drive, had our video still on it, reached out of Wait, what? <laughs> okay. Did your hard drive get stolen and then put on like some kind of hard drive black market? <laughs> Confused. Uh, what do you think of, of this intro beyond the branded intro bit we already talked about? Where's the two-year-old Funko Pop mystery box? Why have I not seen this yet? Why have I not? Why have you not told me anything about it yet? It's taken a long time to get to the point. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. But when they said if you're new here, I was expecting the classic like, "Don't forget to subscribe." We unbox Funko Pops all the time. Um, I am new here, and this the story you're telling i'm not trying to be rude i promise you i'm just trying to come from the perspective of a new viewer and in my opinion this is what i would say to myself if i was legitimately looking for this content i would say i don't really care like yes. this story doesn't feel relevant to me and i, I really want to see the two-year-old mystery box correct you know that that's what i clicked on and so i don't necessarily feel like this part of the video is relevant to me now i your, your collection is really cool i may not necessarily click off if i'm genuinely interested i may just skip ahead and it does look like I'm seeing about a minute or so here, minute 32, your hands are still kind of clasped and it's still you're still in the same, same shirt. So let's look. A couple other blasts from the past coming up soon. Enjoy the video. So so enjoy the video. So like there's a lot of announcements. There's like, here's a backstory as to what's happening. Here's some other announcements coming up soon. We have this, this, and this. Now we're fading to black at a minute 36. Hey guys, welcome. Different shirts. So obviously a different day. And now the video feels like it's about to actually start. So it's a really, it's a long time to ask a new viewer to stick around is what we're getting at. Yeah, you can tell a story of these missing hard drives appearing on YouTube and whatnot. But I think that has to come after you've established more of the mystery about this box. because We still haven't seen it. Uh, one minute 30 in. Yeah. Should we watch just a little bit more? On, yeah. Welcome back to our channel, and if you're new here, I'm Gabby. And I'm Vince. And today we have one box from Akari, two trades, and we have a $100 Janabo Toys mystery box. And the top hit was Steven from Stranger Things as Freddy Funko. Good job. Or Freddy Funko as Steven from Stranger Things. Whatever I think either say. way you say that, it's right. It's, so it's You know what? I I almost feel as if they should put one of their videos in, in the hands of an editor just to see what they do with it. I'd be really curious. Yeah. yeah. There, there seems like a lot of opportunities for camera cuts, like jump, like cutting in and out between the two different people talking. So you could almost, if there's going to be two people every time, you could almost do like a like two camera setup. That would be like a, something I'd strive for for the future. Um, I, I feel like there's a lot of setup if the video if the video started right where we picked it up at 136 uh and and this was the proper intro i still feel like there's a lot of setup and i'm kind of like box unbox a box a box let's do it let's do it let's so, jump 10 minutes in let's, let's 10 minutes in get into the meet and see but, so maybe maybe more like seven minutes in yeah yeah halfway halfway in. and these are not open oh, it's, so it's just one camera angle isn't it fixed all of the time yeah okay do you know the difference from the chase? I'll let you open. Okay. The, well, I think it's all gray, actually. Are you seeing that? Uh, is there an audio sync lag there? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not StreamYard. I think that's them. Mm -hmm. uh, I just noticed it when he put his finger up and he was moving his mouth. It just something was off there. This like one, the old, yes. This one, I believe. Face and mouth it? So... I don't know if it desynced like just as the recording was going, but uh, something you definitely want to watch out for. It, that can that can happen depending on how you're recording your video. Um, I've I've had it where uh, sometimes it, it desyncs so bad, like the longer the video goes, the worse the the sync is. So okay, you want to check that I one? Got out? It. Not yet. It's it, really it went way off. I'm gonna yeah. do one thing. I'm gonna so 11:14 is where we are. I'm gonna refresh the page just to yep. make sure that's yep. not me. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to 1114. Uh, so 1109, whatever. Yeah. Well, well, we got one, so okay. We want to yeah, check that one out. Yeah, like video to me. So definitely a lot of a lot to improve on here. I think. 
Yeah, so now we have to look at this from a channel point of view, and we can see that this video has got nearly 3,000 views in mm -hmm. a couple of weeks. Uh, good amount of engagement. You clearly have a community and a fan base, which is fantastic. Brilliant. Let's go to the channel as a whole, Dan, and see what the state of the channel is. So we've got 6,000 subscribers. Each video is getting uh, thousands of views. I kind of want to put it like this. The channel is doing fantastic in spite of itself mm -hmm. in terms of what I think is happening here is that the creator is filming and then pretty much uploading raw footage, almost like no editing whatsoever. And so now you have to, th I think you've, you, you've clearly got the target audience and you've clearly got them engaged with your ideas. Now you need to respect their time as they watch the content, you know, really up the editing and uh, the editing, um, editing of the content, you know, really, I would imagine that each of these videos, you could probably shave off 50% of the, um, of the, the watch time, you know, the length of the video and it still have the exact messaging storytelling that you want in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's really cool to see just how, big this channel is uh in terms of the like super consistent views you're getting yep this is awesome uh i would honestly i'd play with more shorts too uh there's definitely some funko pop short examples out there it looks like you did it once uh and maybe abandon it after that shorts would be a good thing to get into if you're interested people like just like collectibles like this uh, and i think that can make for some really awesome shorts but it looks like you were advertising the auction again uh so maybe that's why the short didn't do too well because people felt like it wasn't meant for them. Can you just uh, scroll down a bit more, Don? Yeah, let's keep going. Let's get to like two or three months ago because I think the view counts so were four months ago are very, very similar. So again, yeah. I'm just speculating here, but what I imagine is possibly happening is that you have a lot of return viewers who are able to <laughs> tolerate the video quality because the you know what's in there mm -hmm. is really valuable to them but maybe you know as new viewers are joining the channel they're not sticking around for long enough or you're sharing this content in a really engaging community uh, outside of youtube won't be on reddit so you're getting all of your views from there but youtube is struggling to find viewers on the platform itself to add to your audience right i want to see this channel grow i think it can grow uh, I, I would want to be, uh, I want to see, like these numbers are still so consistent seven months down the road here. Mm. Uh, I, I think the ceiling on this content is much higher than this. And you can be capturing more of that, that market share. But I think your videos should be edited more tightly. I think they should be shorter in that sense. And uh, I, I think a little more care can go into just channel audit mode since we're here anyway a little more care into the thumbnails as well now they have a very specific style your current audience is used to them i'm not saying dramatically change them but i think i think there's some work you could do to make the funko pops a bit more of the star which is why they're there in the first place that's why people are watching but a lot of times the funko pop you're showing off in each thumbnail is hidden halfway behind the timestamp uh way off frame See, the Wolverine one is like all the way to the right. Uh, this little this little one's all the way off to the right. They're always kind of tucked in there like, oh, there's a Deadpool. So I think these should be more of the star. I think you can, you can still play with the same font and the same kind of text boxes you're using. But, you know, try and try and make these things a little more of the star. Just test it out. See if that gets more new people in the door. And then also pair that with more solid edits. Those are my thoughts. I concur with your thoughts. All right. We will move on to the next uh, gaming channel on the list, which is 452. All right. It's Shadowfall Games. They want to entertain their community. I was thinking, Dan, another question we could maybe put in the form is, what's your average audience retention? Hmm. Yeah, be really interesting to see for the video reviews, especially. Mm. All right. Uh, they're playing some Five Nights at Freddy's. They're playing some Team Fortress 2. Uh, so, so not Friday Night Funking. 
<laughs> no, not Friday Night Funk. Yeah. Uh, it's F N A F, not F N F. I learned that yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it, no, that one got me too. The first time I, I saw that acronym, Minecraft. Uh, there's Left 4 Dead 2. If I was in channel audit mode, I would be talking about this, but let's just look at their latest video from two weeks ago. Solid thumbnails. What's Solid. up, yeah. guys? My name is Shadowfall, and welcome back to TF2. I have a friend here, actually, and his name is Dr. Rose. Introduce yourself. <laughs> oh, yes. Greetings. Hello. I am Dr. Rose. <laughs> and the goal of this video is basically just to ignore the entire Two Forge server with Battle Engineer, with the Frontier Justice, the pistol, and technically most people use the gunslinger but i decided to use the jag because one the sentry so that's 30 seconds right yeah so I, I think you need to flip things a little bit here you you told us the goal of the um video was something that was kind of stretching out a bit too much that should have been put at the front and you need to figure out a way to deliver that uh goal in five to ten seconds and also have b-roll of this of, of these stakes and what what was happening later on in the video and then you can jump into the um you know, what was at the very beginning of this video as your introduction to the meat of the content because i you know i was i was humored by when you were introducing yourself and you turned to the left and then there was this what whatever it was an engineer or like a scientist that was on fire and and said some words that was that was quite interesting and funny but that yeah. felt as if it needed to come after you establishing the core of a video in a short amount of time. Yeah. I there's there's a lot going on that's right here. I, I think the fact that they have set up their what would I call this? Their their streaming build to allow us to see them like come into frame larger. Like that's something a lot of gaming channels do when they have face cams. It works really well. It adds to like the dramatic um effects and stuff because you're you're reacting to things and so having your face pop up big sometimes is going to be really important throughout the video uh i like that you introduced your friend i think that's cool like you have someone with you and you took the time to let the audience know i've also seen it where i've watched group gaming videos where they don't necessarily introduce their friends they just use words like we and then they'll they'll go so far as to get footage that their friends captured to put in the video like and i'm not saying you need to do that but you can just pop their name on the screen when they start talking as like their introduction. There's there's other ways you can do it, but I just I like that you took the time to like tell the audience who this person is. Uh, but just when we're talking about cutting down your intro, they they kind of made a meal of that, right? They they took a long time to say hello, you know, and so you have to kind of edit around that just to keep the pace of your intro, uh, or you could find different ways to introduce people just so you keep you keep that pace up. We're nitpicking. This is like I'm nitpicking anyway. This is a really like good start, I think. Um, so what you were saying earlier about like different B-roll, like you're saying like partway through the video, uh, where that works. there's some action, you know, I didn't click on an action packed bit. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, we have, we, we have some shooting going on or something. You can have that at the beginning of the video over what you're saying. Yeah. I, uh, I seem to remember from the intro, they said that they were going to try and flood the map or the game with a certain character. Now, is there a particular two or three second clip where there are multiples of that person just streaming all over the map and absolute chaos ensues. Yeah. That's what we want to see. Like the, those more interesting bits just as a teaser for what's to come. Yeah. It is a quite a long video. It's 19 minutes long. So it's, it's kind of an ask from the audience to like stick around. So you want to just show that like, no, 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 stick around. This is going to pay off. Um, Maybe we'll look at an outro just to see how they sure. I can already sense what they're going to do. But let's let's see. To me, it's been fun. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. If you like oh, the no. video, I gladly appreciate oh, it. Just, that was it. Oh, this one has the video just died. Oh. <laughs> oh. Bye, everyone. It's all over. <laughs> I can't get my head completely off the frame. No, I don't think you can. <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck. I'm you need stuck. to lower your floor. I gotta, I gotta get back up. <laughs> so, okay, so how long is this gonna take? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really You're right. I'll manage. I'll manage. There we go. Ah, where were we? What? So what? 
what happened? Why did you melt? Because he said something along the lines of, I hope you enjoyed this, or thanks for watching, or that was fun. What was it? Just go back five seconds. Yeah, it was a, It was a, like a, that's, that was fun. Okay, this spy is actually really good. Not gonna lie. Engineer is actually fun when you actually start shooting at things. <laughs> but thank you, Dr. Rose, for helping me. It's been fun. So yeah, 1815. Kind of so there. We have almost a minute left in the video, but you've already signaled the video's over. And so that's that's something to work on. Uh, you you kind of want people to make it as far as they possibly can into the video. All that uh, all that little that that little tiny bit of time that people are leaving your video, that's valuable watch time being taken away from you. So that's kind of where that's coming from. And you always have an opportunity to throw to the next video, but it looks like you just kind of put up a static end but screen. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Yep. All right. Go. <laughs> so <laughs> the reason Rob left was because you said bye again. Oh, well, on this, this, there's some end screen cards here. Oh, I'm not here to oh. click on them. Ah. Yeah, you already left. Nag nab it. They, they said goodbye so many times uh, that we never got to these. And we don't know why to click them either. So, again, an opportunity to put one of these up instead of two and tell us, like, what's, you know, what's going to happen. Now, I do like that one of them seems to be a Team Fortress 2 video, but one of them is Five Nights at Freddy's. And since you're playing so many games in your channel, one would assume that the Team Fortress people probably aren't going to watch the Five Nights at Freddy's stuff. So you really just want to focus on this and, and talk about why I should watch it. So definitely some positive things here. I like their thumbnails. I like their energy a lot. And uh, let's see. <laughs> well, let's answer we, that. We can answer this. After, uh, as long Once you finish, we can answer this, Dan. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I like the energy. I like all that stuff. I think there's a lot going on right. But uh, I do think that there could have been more done in the intro to just hook people and get them to stay there. And that's really what we what we need. So to answer this question, uh, I used to be, I would say, an advanced, really keen gamer. Like I wanted to get into video games journalism. That's why I went in, went to university and to do English with creative writing with the hope of being a, a gaming journalist. And I had my own, um, my own um, website called the Video Gamers Journal. That morphed into Video Gadgets Journal, which is my YouTube oh, channel. Okay, all right. Um, but... Uh, when I didn't get like my opportunity in games, right? And I'm glad I didn't because the pay is terrible. I think for games journalism, maybe it's better now, but I think it was terrible at the time. Uh, and I got into YouTubing instead. I've definitely become all I used to hate: casual gaming. Like I just buy games when they're super cheap. I um, miss out a lot of parts of the games. I just like to play play the parts of the game that I enjoy. I never do any multiplayer, and so I'm very much a casual gamer these days. I don't know what a hard gamer, hardcore gamer is in this context. Is it somebody who just plays a lot of games or is it someone who plays games that are more like intense? Because I've found over the years that I like way more chill games. I used to play first person shooters. I used to play a, a lot. I used to play Call of Duty and Halo and uh, you know all this destiny. Like I was just all about it. And in recent years, I've been like, I just want to chill. You know, I want to build stuff. Uh, I was talking about No Man's Sky earlier, which kind of has a good combination of like, there's guns, and there's some stuff you can fight. But mostly for me, I fly around in spaceships. I build bases. I want to collect more spaceships. I want it like, there's not a lot of danger that I encounter in that game. And I, I like it that way. It's, but I play a lot of these games. Does that make me a hardcore gamer? Or is it the fact that I don't play really intense games? Now I'm not a hardcore gamer. Now I'm just a casual. I would imagine it's when you commit yourself to a game and become like potentially one of the best in the world and you spend, you know, five to 10 hours a day on it. So I would say the, the hardcore gaming zenith with, for me was, I, th I think, Unreal Tournament. You know, the, um, when it was Unreal Tournament versus Quake 3, I was playing Unreal Tournament a lot and it did online rankings. And I think I got into the top 50 of that. Wow. Um, but now I don't know how good that is. Like, I'm sure there was that was a top 50 of whatever site was tracking certain games on Unreal Tournament. I think I got into the top 50 of that. And but beyond that, yeah, just casual gaming now. Like, I'm playing Zelda Wind Waker. I'm replaying that at the moment. That's hard, how hardcore I am. Yeah. So hopefully that answered your question. Um, 
we will move on to the next channel, which I have here. It's Mika. Just being Mika, says their channel banner. Uh, they have shorts. It looks like exclusively from three months ago they started. And they already have 12 subscribers from just a small handful of shorts here and some pretty impressive views. Uh, Why have I not posted any shorts anymore? This, this is all from a month ago. Yeah, I don't know. Let's look at the latest one. All right. When someone's interrupt you, well, gentle parenting. <laughs> okay. I, I, that's a fair short, I think. <laughs> I didn't quite get it because I couldn't quite understand what the rap was saying, but I, I really struggle with picking out lyrics from songs. There is some swearing in it. It said, mind your business, basically. Okay. Um, I think there was swearing in it. That's what I heard anyway. Uh, let's look at this one called Leftovers. All right. Sometimes I have the other piece of my cupcake, the other half of my cupcake. But look at this. Look at this. Ooh, yummy. Cupcake, right? Yummy, yummy. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got earned that. Oh, my gosh. I'd be so mad. Uh, so, so hang on, is that, her, is that her significant other then who's just munched the inside of it? Because I'm seeing hashtag couple problems. Oh. That's hashtag a good leftovers. question. Huh? Well, hashtag leftovers. Or was it their kid that did that? Yeah, I don't know. That's uh, someone. Someone's messing with you, though. But, uh, but I, in terms of like a show, that was like a, a cool little story, wasn't it? You know, I've got yeah. this problem. You know, I'm really looking forward to this. And oh, oh, it's not there. It's all gone. I, I think the reason it didn't get more views was because it, just like a lot of the videos we've seen today, we want to see the cupcake, uh, I think, at the start. So if you if you were holding it and you were holding it from the side that looked intact and you, and you were staring at it and going, I'm so excited to eat this, except look at this and you turn it around to reveal what's happened. I think there's more like visually going on to keep the audience from swiping away. Uh, with with so few shorts on the channel, my I guess my uh, view of this is it's time to make more shorts. You know, it's Obviously. time to keep going. But yeah. I, I kind of like again, this is where the form saying like, oh, like what's what's going on? What you know, right. yeah. specifically, it might be a lack of ideas. Uh, I I think you know, there's probably some channels you can follow that get into parenting and you know food and, and funny things like that and i think you could probably get some inspiration from them that's really what it's going to come down to is just finding some inspiration to get some more shorts on the channel the i thought the, the video length was pretty much spot on for shorts mm -hmm. uh, you know each each one was telling some form of story uh, and i think you've, you've got the fundamentals in place there so yeah let's just keep creating let's make a uh, hundred shorts over the next hundred days uh, that would be my uh, challenge to you because each one of them needs to average 111,000 views to get monetized. Yeah. As people but, uh, keep reminding me in the comments. <laughs> uh, uh, Dan, can you just TV when making a reel goes wrong behind the scenes one? That that title's done enough for me to win the click. Bottom left-hand corner. Yeah, this one. Huh. I, didn't, huh. I didn't really get what went wrong there. Uh, yeah, I don't. I didn't really see it. Uh, I, and that's that's the thing. This one didn't get as many views either. And uh, some of them get a lot of views. And I think it's just the first few seconds, like that that context needs to be there. Like, why am I watching this? What what are you trying to show me? Uh, There's a lot of talking in the background, so it's kind of confusing. Baby steals my food. Right, let's try that one. In my head. I know what's going to go happen. Now that almost worked. The problem was, you see the baby's head right at the beginning. That needed to be that needed to be cut out. So you just see, you know, that I can't do this. Can I? You, got, you just want to see the hand coming, this mysterious hand picking something and then disappearing. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. I, I think, yeah, again, editing could have. Uh... So it needs to start there, and she needs to be more in frame, mm -hmm. and then the hand appearing from nowhere. So hopefully, hopefully our array of tips have been helpful. Uh, ultimately, if you want the channel to grow, it's just going to take more content. But this is a really good start. Make more videos.
Yes. 3.05 on the gaming form. All right. Their goal is to grow their channel. Maybe we can help you. All right. Uh, so that certainly the, the channel banner speaks to what they said on the form, which was my goal is to grow the channel. Uh, let's see what we have here. So two weeks ago, there was, um, a video that got 2.7 K views, uh, them DMing Twitch, uh, sending Twitch a hundred thousand DMs, sending an unban. Uh, I don't know how to say that person's name, but I do recall somebody getting banned quite recently. Uh, I sent Eric a hundred thousand DMs for this. And he finally said this, ah, so you got a response. So in channel audit mode real quick. It, you're saying you sent somebody else a hundred thousand DMs quite annoying. And the fact that you got a response is buried in, in the very long title. I think his response was no as well. According to the thumbnail. Yeah. So I would have said Eric said this after a hundred thousand DMs. Ah, yeah. nice, nice uh, way to rewrite the title, Dan. This is Iraq, and it's holding the world's largest pizza party by the end of the year when it gets to 10 million subscribers. And Iraq is currently sitting at 9.3 million subscribers, which means it's 620,000 subscribers away. And at the rate of gaining 20,000 subscribers every single day, Iraq will actually make it by the end of October. But before I get you guys confused, I'm going to start from the very beginning. Of that, I am throwing the world's largest pizza party at the end of the year. And you, you watching this literally right now, are invited. You see, I recently DM'd to Pizza Hut and asked them what it would take to help me make the world's largest pizza. And they said... So, 30 seconds. Felt like uh, I was just told the same thing again, that the creator introduced this in a very high-octane, fast-paced fast paced way. And now he's just reclipping the Arak story of this. Um, where are the DMs? Why have I not? Why why have you not told me about all of these DMs you're going to send me yet? Yeah, there's there's still another ten seconds that's kind of going on, and then it looks like it comes back to them telling the story. The world's largest pizza party when I live on the other side of the world. Yep, I am from Africa, and I don't know if Eric actually knows that he has subscribers from all over the world. Is this pizza party? So. Now, a minute into the video, which is halfway because it's a two-minute video, we get into the DMs. 100,000 DMs telling him to reserve my slice of pizza. And by saying this, I mean him flying me to America for this slice of pizza. Yep, I am a subscriber of Iraq, and I love Iraq, and I don't know what you guys think about this. But I actually have four good reasons on why I'm doing this. Number one. It kind of feels like the video should have started a minute in. <laughs> Yeah. Like you can briefly tell the story of what's happening, but I feel like they showed quite a bit of the Eric video, Eric video in, in the first part, you know, and first they told the story, then they let him tell the story. Then they gave some other, other reasons as to why they want to go. And then, you know what I mean? We're now finally getting into the DMS like over halfway into the video. So the premise is, uh, Eric is holding the largest pizza party in the world to celebrate a milestone. So I'm going to annoy him with 100,000 DMs to get my invite. Yep. That's like the 15 second pitch, isn't it? So do that in your own very unique way with uh, your editing style and, and the narration. But that just covers the first one minute 20 of what we've kind of scrubbed through. Right. So uh, interesting concept for a video. It did not really take off uh, the way some of your other ones have. In mm -hmm. fact, it's kind of interesting that the view discrepancy here, based on the video before it, you know, these videos are not that far apart, and it's sitting at 49 views. Um, so you, you might look at the title and the thumbnail of that, and uh, that could be why. It, it's it's just uh, the, the real meat of the title kind of got lost. Because you're you're saying he responded and we never got to see that. Um, do we want to look at another one? Shall we look at the second one then, the Twitch one? Yeah. This is Twitch, and this is how actually one hundred thousand DMs look like. And this there you go. So that was like a different way of introducing it, wasn't it? It, it, it reinforced the DMs aspect of this. Yep. 
the Marcus Cousins the third, aka the professional Radag. But before I get you guys confused, I'm gonna start from the very beginning. So so when so someone... pause it. All right, so that was like less than twenty seconds in. Like here's the the quick intro. Now we'll go back to the beginning and I'll tell the entire story. I, I felt that was sh sharper and snappier. Yeah, it, that might be the big reason why this video spread so much further. Because it it told the story, like the click paid off immediately. Like, this is Twitch. This is me sending them 100,000 DMs. Let's talk about that. So the, the there's a big difference between this video and the one that we were just looking at. I don't know if we need to see more necessarily. Mm-hmm. So yeah, those are our, our general tips. Uh, I would eventually invest, if you can, in a in a better microphone. It, your microphone is a bit muffled. Uh, could be some improvements there, but uh, you can definitely be understood. So just kind of like as you're looking to make improvements to your channel going forward, that could be one. Um, I think the thumbnails are quite good. Well, at least the, yeah. the ones on the top row are. Uh, I like these. I like these a lot. I, I think they break up a little bit here. Like they're they're kind of other people's thumbnails that you're making small changes to here and there and uh yeah it's i like this style better i think but yeah a lot of a lot of positive stuff here for that channel cool all right uh I let's just sent you, i sent you a quick message done uh huh? you want to check it in the private chat oh yes goodness thank you um we've, been, cru we've been cruising along today and we forgot to talk about bo who we said we talk about hey uh, bo bo johnson just hit 300 subscribers whoop, whoop. and you can see there in the picture 95 of those subscribers were just from the last 28 days all right 33 percent growth in 28 days a huge jump for this channel and the reason we're talking about Bo is because they're part of vidIQ max and we're gonna check out their channel yes uh, he is yes Bo Johnson has been very active in the vidIQ max community and actually has asked us a number of times to take a look at their channel but we never have a chance while we're doing our our Friday chats in the vidIQ max discord so uh you know I saw them I saw this milestone pop up for them and thought okay we're gonna finally take a look at Bo's channel and these Friday chats Dan are just where you and I and others just randomly drop into discord and just start having conversation about YouTube updates you know, we have these conversations such as like hardcore gaming, favorite games. It can go in all sorts of different directions, but it's just a chance to talk directly. You know, people can come on stage and have some one to one conversations with us in VidIQ Max. Mm -hmm. uh, last time we talked about some YouTube updates, and we'll probably do that again this week if we do it this week. I'm not sure if we are or not yet, but uh, yeah, uh, VidIQ Max folks in there, we asked them to ask their questions, and we're going to be talking, if we are in there, I imagine about shorts and monetization quite a bit. Before you even press play, like, this first frame is interesting because it shows thousands of dollars, which is reinforced. It's reinforced in the thumbnail before we even get into it. And the thumbnail is pretty solid as it is. So good start. Yeah, the title is selling these items for huge profits on eBay. And that is paying off the second we click on the video. You know, boom, money. Hey, everybody. We got 66 orders going out over the weekend, totaling $2,943. Let's get to pulling and packing. Hope you're all doing well. My name is Bo. I am a full-time eBay reseller. I post a couple videos every week because I want to show you what has sold in our eBay store. So the next time that you go outsourcing, maybe you can find some of these items as well to help grow your eBay store. Let's nice. Get it. it was a bit of a long value proposition, um, but... It does definitely define the target audience and it felt genuine and authentic. You know, there was a bit of that rough and ready approach, but I think it worked in that scenario because he's just in his warehouse or whatever, like he got loads of items ready to be sold in the background. I feel like I'm in the right place if I'm a fellow eBay seller because, you know, I'm disorganized. I've got just lots of stuff in random boxes ready to sell. But so does this person who's selling stuff for thousands of dollars. I guess what's missing here is, what did you sell? Like if you'd have sold uh, 50 uh, candles for 350, th you know, like some scented candles for a, a huge markup, that would have been nice to see because I'm trying to think, okay, so you sold thousands of dollars worth of stuff. Is this stuff that I can buy or is this stuff that's accessible to me? Uh, can I sell this on my eBay store? That's been held back a little bit. I, yeah, I completely agree. There's, there's uh, definitely authenticity to seeing you in, in your warehouse and stuff. Like, 
I'm a I'm a professional eBay seller. Like we can tell. Like <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, a video idea popped in my head when I saw this. I don't. Maybe you've done it before. Maybe you haven't. But a cool idea might be like uh, my X many dollar eBay warehouse. Like I kind of wonder if there could be a, a a tour of your warehouse that that you give people just who are thinking about getting into this more full time, taking it more serious. I think anyone taking this more seriously would be very interested in seeing like the full set up if you haven't done that already but that's just a random idea that popped in my head and make sure at the beginning of that video you show exactly where that warehouse is on google maps y yeah don't do that <laughs> <laughs> so your ebay store let's get right. into it We're montage all right so now we see what is selling yeah uh, each of these clips is two seconds and good that was that montage was about 15 seconds so you didn't spend too long on it that's a nice transition that's almost like a Casey nice that transition that yeah from one part of the story to the other. so again thumbs up a production value of this video is very high so far they're doing a really 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 solid well, job what i would say dan is that you know, i wouldn't say that the production value is high like, i think anybody can recreate this mm -hmm. it's the the structure of the content which is which is of yeah. a high value high production yes value. yeah you're right excuse me yeah that's that is uh exactly what I he meant. could be using a phone uh he's, he's not he's, it's not not on a tripod it's very much run and gun mm -hmm. the the lighting could be better like the, all that stuff uh but yes the the editing the structure of the video as you said really solid and the rail sold for ten dollars plus five ninety five shipping. All right, so like I said in the past video, I mentioned that I hadn't been listing women's clothing for like the past three months. I have been listing now for the past week, mixing in some women's clothing into the men's clothing that I've been listing. So I sold this free people women's shirt for fifteen dollars plus five ninety five shipping. And Why wasn't he just... listing those women's shirts? I don't know. Maybe sourcing the stuff can be difficult sometimes. Um, Bo, tell me the answer. Like, oh, you that's, think you think he's going to like talk about it? It's a question that popped into my head. Like you're kind of relating back to a previous video. Like you're not listing these things, but you didn't tell me why. Like you know, as somebody who's selling eBay stuff, maybe this is an important point. Like, should you, if you're selling loads of tech, you know, it's a bit like a channel. Uh, if you're selling loads of tech on eBay, is it going to look really suspicious if all of a sudden you start selling women's clothing or kids' toys? You know, uh, you've got a, a GeForce Radeon 1080 card over here for $400 and then ladies' uh, leggings over here. I don't know. I'm just spitballing. Like, is there a reason why that would be a good idea or a bad idea? Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. Should we look at the outro? We kind of mm -hmm. see where this is going now. Uh, so the set changes a couple times, but let's just see what the outro of this video is like. Be able to achieve the goals that you have set and keep you on track. I believe in positive reinforcement to give you the drive to keep on going during the good times and the bad times. Everybody needs a coach. Do you have a coach? I'll see you there. Where? Where? I'm. Did, now, I'm, did we miss? Did we miss a bit there? I think we missed a lot. The Nothing video yet. seems to be about something totally different now. <laughs> I'm confused. So this is them taking all the stuff to the mail, well, presumably. Well, I hope that this video was helpful to you. Oh, oh, no, don't please I've done it again. <laughs> did you not learn from the last time you did this stunt? <laughs> you... <laughs> um, so we have almost a full minute before the video ends, but you, you've you said the magic words, and now I know I can click off of the video, which is going to harm your retention. We don't want that. I'm stuck. <laughs> I can't move. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll just put the microphone down to me. Okay. All right. Let's 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 carry on. <laughs> okay. And if you want to take your eBay store to the next level, consider joining my eBay coaching program. You can find it. Okay. It's the coaching program. So I would have just said that. Like once you transition from you walking to the mailbox, I would have, I would have immediately said, if you want to take your eBay uh, store to the next level, join, you know what I mean? No, thanks for watching the video. Don't, don't say that. <laughs> never, never say those words. Uh, if you do, if you want people to hear the next thing you're going to say. Where um, so where's this ending us? Carry on playing. In the link down below. Oh, okay, it's in the description. Yeah. 
So that's what well, that's presumably where he'll see us uh, next. Uh, looking at the channel as a whole, I really like the thumbnails. I think they're really nice and sharp and vibrant. I think these are great. Uh, I think that the, again, editing in the videos is very solid, very well done. They know who their target audience is, which is incredible. Uh, thumbnails have come a very long way just from a, a few weeks ago, uh, a month ago. Mm. Uh, and they weren't bad then either, but they're just, I, I'd say they're on a whole nother level now. It's making progress in some videos as well, like... Sell these items to grow your eBay business has got 1,600 views. Do this set up? Do do this to set up an eBay for photography station that's got 600 views. So he's starting to see some of the rewards. Some videos mm -hmm. are performing as well. You know, like is 50 views after 20 hours good? I don't know, but I think this is where you just have to have a little bit of patience. I can see the rewards are starting to to arrive on the channel. And yeah. we are taking 100% of the credit for this because it's in VidIQ Max. Yes, they are in VidIQ Max. And this is, again, a very active participant in the VidIQ Max Discord, which is just one aspect of VidIQ Max. There is a Discord full of creators. It is exclusive just to VidIQ Max members. So you have to be in VidIQ Max to gain access to this. But you also get access to dozens and dozens of coaching sessions that have been pre-recorded which means every single month that goes by that you're not in VidIQ Max, the price does not change, but the service becomes more valuable because you have yet more access to even more VidIQ Max coaching sessions and lessons that are going to help you grow your channel. They go over all kinds of different aspects and they happen every other week. Uh, and a lot of times they contain guests with really insane knowledge about uh, YouTube and different spaces on YouTube. So you definitely want to be signed up for this. Not only that, you get all of our tools is part of vidIQ Max. So you don't just get the coaching. Every tool you see us use all the time is included in the price of vidIQ Max. So check it out. The link is down below. I believe we're still running a promo right now. Right, Rob? I believe so. Yeah. Uh, have we got the link in the description? Let me just check. Yes, we do. We have a discount code, uh, which is automatically applied if you click on the link, and it will save you hundreds of dollars over an annual subscription so do make sure to check that out and Absolutely. and here's another thing if you are part of vidIQ max everybody in the discord group will say and let you know if they're if you're being audited on these live streams because i'm seeing in the discord now <laughs> saying bo bo people are checking out uh, rob and dana auditing your channel it's, and he's saying wow let me check it out so it's you almost get like notification alerts uh, where, yeah. when you're being featured we could just pick you out you just never know when it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the video's over now. So now you can leave. We dismiss you. <laughs> See, we did our plug. We said what we wanted to... We, we sold what we wanted to sell you. We did all the things. And now we're, you know... Bye. hope you enjoyed this live stream. Oh, yeah. Hit the like button. See, now no one's going to do it because we told you to leave. See, we missed we missed out on, on hundreds of likes. Potentially. Ah, dag nabbit. Mm-hmm. Well, they're still here. They're making us look like liars. We said once you say bye, they leave. Do you want to have a staring competition, Doug? What do I stare at? You stare at me. The, you are the lens. No, oh. no, no, no. We, we, like this. I can't. Now I'm going to laugh. This is like a real staring contest. I win. I can't, I can't do it. I win. Well, I'm sure you're hungry. Um, <laughs> I am. <laughs> So we'll we'll actually leave. All right, everybody. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Doodaloo.